Good evening. Welcome to Source 16 News at 10. Well, first, we're going to take a look at the latest school closings. There will be no school tomorrow in the following counties. Caldwell, Christian, Hopkins, Todd, Trigg, and Webster, and Clarksville Montgomery County Schools in Tennessee. Dawson Springs Schools will open at 9 o'clock in the morning, and Christian County Head Start part day only will be closed Thursday. In other news, icy road conditions on I-24 claim the life of a Gilbertsville man this morning in a wreck in Lyon County. Around 7.50, Kentucky State Police report 46-year-old Charles Sibbles of Gilbertsville was driving his pickup truck westbound on I-24 at exit 40 near Katawa when he drove across the U.S. 62 overpass and lost control of his truck due to the ice-covered roadway. Sibbles' truck reportedly hit a bridge rail, then entered the median and hit a guardrail before it came to a stop. Police say Civils and his passenger, 21-year-old Clinton Civils, got out of their vehicle for safety reasons and about five minutes later, a pickup truck driven by 31-year-old Sherry Reed of Edible crossed the same ice-covered bridge and lost control. According to state police, Reed's vehicle entered the median and hit Charles Civils, throwing him about 20 feet, breaking his left leg and causing internal trauma. Police say Civils was transported to Caldwell County Hospital where he died from his injuries. Reed was transported to Western Baptist Hospital with undisclosed non-life-threatening injuries. Say police say the westbound lane of I-24 was shut down for about an hour and then reopened. Well, Source 16 viewers are waking to a beautiful blanket of snow covering everything that could be seen as far as the eye could see this morning. Overnight snow totals reached as high as 7 inches in portions of northern Christian and Trigg counties to 3.5 inches in communities close to the Kentucky-Tennessee state line, while some other western Kentucky counties in our viewing area reported about 1.5 inches of snow or less. Local and state road crews were busy most of the night salting and clearing main roads, while secondary roads are still covered with inches of snow and are hazardous. Numerous minor accidents were reported in the Source 16 viewing area when the brunt of the snowstorm hit yesterday afternoon, causing road conditions to quickly deteriorate. While road crews did a great job clearing the main roads, tonight motorists will need to use extra caution on secondary roads which have not been salted and will remain slick and hazardous. If you are going to be out and about tonight, please slow down and use caution as refreezing is likely to occur in some spots even on the main roads as the temperature drops. Meanwhile, motorists traveling in Benton need to be cautious at the busy intersection of U.S. 641 North Main Street and Kentucky 348 West 5th Street. Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Spokesman Keith Todd says a crash severely damaged the traffic signal at the intersection this morning and the intersection is temporarily functioning as a four-way stop. He says some delays are possible during peak travel times. According to Todd, an electrical contractor is scheduled to start reconstructing the traffic signal tomorrow. Motorists should be alert for a crew working at the intersection during daylight hours over the next couple of days. Meanwhile, according to reports out of Benton, the same vehicle that took out the traffic signal crashed into a subway and injured several people. Benton Police Department, the Marshall County Sheriff's Department, and Kentucky State Police responded to the scene. However, as of news time, law enforcement had not released any details regarding the wreck or how many people were injured and taken to the hospital. Christian County Circuit Court Judge Andrew Self continued the case of a Hopkinsville man involved in the 2009 murder of a Crofton man. Judge Self continued 36-year-old Michael Mosby's sentencing until Tuesday afternoon, February 15th at 1.30 after his public defender Brad Shuffert could not make it to court today. Mosby was supposed to be sentenced today after he took a plea deal on September 2nd from the Commonwealth to have his murder charge amended to second-degree manslaughter for a 10-year sentence. As Source 16 reported previously, Mosby, along with three other co-defendants, were involved in the February 20, 2009 shooting death of Desmond Welch of Crofton following a robbery. Earlier this month, the judge self-sentenced two of Mosby's co-defendants, Robert Lewis, to 20 years in prison, and Maurice Lane to five years in prison for their roles in the murder. A multinational corporation donated thousands of dollars today to a Hopkinsville program that helps local teens struggling with drug abuse. This afternoon, Walmart officials donated $20,000 to keep the Christian County's juvenile drug court running. Even though we're a global company, we try to operate our stores one at a time in the local communities, and we try to give back to causes in the local community that mean a lot to that local area. And Walmart was able to help at this time, 
and we were more than happy to join forces with others in the community who's raising money to be able to help keep the drug program alive. District 8 State Representative John Tilley requested the donation to help offset the drug court's financial difficulties. If we can invest this money in juveniles, in our children, the return on investment is much greater. Not, not only is it the right thing to do, but our return on investment is much greater. The average cost of treatment, juvenile or adult, outpatient treatment is about $3,000. According to District Court Judge Jim Adams, it will cost about $80,000 each year to continue the program that's now in its 11th year. We have the only remaining juvenile drug court in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and that's because of the support. Over the past 10 years, we've been able to serve over 100 uh, youth of our community. Approximately 8% of those have graduated, and about, about, about only 15% of those persons who have graduated from our program have uh, District 9 State Representative Myron Dawson and District 15 State Representative Brent Yance attended the event along with local officials. Four Campbell officials say this week's welcome home ceremonies are still a go with the exception of some time changes. As Source 16 reported Monday, nearly a thousand Rakasans are scheduled to return this week to the local post from a year-long deployment in Afghanistan. About 290 soldiers from the 3rd Brigade Combat Team returned earlier today, and 200 soldiers from the same brigade are scheduled to return Friday morning around 1130. Meanwhile, two flights are scheduled Saturday night for 545 and 730 for more returning Rakasans. In addition, soldiers from the 717th Ordnance Company, 184th Ordnance Battalion, 52nd Ordnance Group are scheduled to return Sunday night around 725. Fort Campbell officials say returning flights scheduled for this Friday and this weekend may change. For any last-minute flight changes, check out Fort Campbell's website, campbell.army.mil. Then you go to the Families category and then click on Welcome Home Ceremonies. Police are investigating the death of a 14-month-old found face down in a bucket of bleach water last night. According to Fulton Police, the child was in the care of a babysitter when she was found around 7 o'clock Monday night in the kitchen of the Fulton residence while her mother was at work. First responders transported the child to Parkway Regional Hospital where she was pronounced dead at 7.30 that evening. The Fulton County Coroner, Department of Social Services and the Fulton Police Department are still investigating this case for the Commonwealth Attorney to review and determine if any charges should be filed. A man previously convicted of robbery in Marshall County is back behind bars and could face similar charges in northern Kentucky. Authorities say the 24-year-old Stuart Ray is responsible for at least seven bank and grocery store robberies across the state. U.S. Marshal spokesman Craig Smith says Ray was arrested late Monday night in Jefferson County. Surveillance cameras showed clear images of a young, white, thin man wearing the same knit hat and a gray hoodie with black rimmed glasses each time. Authorities say currently Ray has only been charged with a parole violation, but say he is a suspect in all of the robberies. Ray was convicted of two counts of robbery, one count of burglary, and one count of theft by unlawful taking in Marshall County in 2004. He was released from prison in July of last year after serving five and a half years of a 10-year sentence. Newly elected U.S. Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky has responded to President Barack Obama's State of the Union address last night. Senator Paul says the president and Democrats clearly realize that he has no way of financing his dreams of bigger government without raising taxes or bankrupting the country. And according to Paul, the president still yearns for big government. He adds that Obama must realize that his new health care entitlements threaten the already existing entitlements. Even without Obamacare, Medicare and Social Security are threatened by the demographics of the baby boomers. Within a few years, we will nearly double the number of seniors. We will go from 42 million seniors to 77 million seniors in the space of only a few years. Much to his chagrin, President Obama realizes that his plan to enlarge government, to expand central planning of our economic lives is now imperiled by the debt. It is too large and looming for even a big government liberal to completely ignore. In recent weeks and during last night's address, Paul says the president talked about spending cuts and fiscal conservatism, but he adds, listen to the details. He is by nature a progressive, a believer that government is the answer, that an elite few can make society better if only they had enough money. He laments that his government stimulus would have worked 
if only he had more of our taxpayer money to spend. No matter that the government stimulus plan spent $400,000 per job created. For 19 months, unemployment has hovered near 10%. After a trillion dollar government stimulus and $2 trillion in Federal Reserve stimulus, the President and the Democrats in Congress say we can solve this problem with more spending and printing of more money. That's ridiculous. And the American people have had... Ultimately, the senator says it may take another election to right the ship of state and allow us to leave behind this terrible recession and joblessness. And he adds that day cannot come soon enough. A former University of Kentucky basketball player has joined the governor and first lady in supporting higher graduation rates across the Commonwealth. Jamal Mashburn joined Governor Steve Bashir and First Lady Jane Bashir today and urged lawmakers to pass House Bill 225, which would gradually increase the mandatory attendance age for high school students from 16 to 18. Mashburn, who spent 13 years in the NBA after playing for the Wildcats, pledged his support for the bill, saying he struggled early in high school, but encouragement from family and teachers helped pull him through. Nearly 6,000 Kentucky students dropped out in 2009, and nearly 26% of adults statewide currently possess less than a high school diploma. The bill would gradually increase the mandatory attendance age to 17 in 2015 and then to 18 in 2016. Phasing in this change will allow school districts plenty of time to prepare their policies and budgets for this transition.